All right, so we're going to go through um, our favourite moments of the tournament. We're going to give you one big disappointment as well. So we're going to start positive and then get very, very negative on the show. Best goal, I mean... <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm trying to find other goals, but the best goal, there's only one goal to look at, isn't there? It really is, isn't it? You're obviously thinking Bellingham, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Mm. I think everyone listening is thinking Jude. That's, look, that's the goal. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's certainly the goal that I will remember forever. Yeah. It, in ter- just in, not only in terms of the spectacular nature of it, but in terms of the jeopardy, in terms of the timing, in terms of what it actually meant. Yeah. Like, England were out. England were dead and buried. Gone. Southgate was gone. Everything was changing. Mm. And suddenly... Things are still on track. The dream is still alive. And it's all thanks to the brilliance of that spectacular bicycle kick from Jude Bellingham. Yeah. But there have been some other good goals. There has been some other goals. I mean, Ruben Vargas' goal for Switzerland. We've got yeah. to look out for him. That Gula. Italy. Gula's goal. You know, uh, Turkey against Georgia, I think. There you go. Beautiful Another one yeah. as well. Shakiri's goal against Scotland. Oh, the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Pinged it. There you go. So there's been other goals, but mm. let's be honest, there's only one in terms of best goal. And that simply is Jude Bellingham's goal against Slovakia. All right. Player. So far, this is interesting. Best player of the tournament so far. I think again, it's quite obvious. Well, I've, I've gone. I've got two here. You, you said, you got, is yours uh, a German? Yeah. I've, got, I've got a German and I've got a Spaniard. I think it is a German, and everybody else is second place. Disagree. I mean, it is the answer. The answer is Jamal Musiala, right? I don't know. Is that the of course answer? it is. Yeah, Musiala has been far and away the best player in the tournament. He's been good, isn't he? Yeah, um, and it, do you know what? Top goal scorer as well, three e- goals. Every single time I see him play, every single time I see him do something brilliant, I get that pang of pain, don't you? I just immediately gets transported back to that image of him looking about fifteen years old, England sitting shirt. in an England shirt next to Jude Bellingham, it's a, it's a, it's a shoulder disaster. to shoulder with Jude Bellingham how, in like, the three lines. Someone should be sacked and locked up for this. Can't like, believe uh, it. Uh, how he's not playing for England? I mean, he was playing for Chelsea and England, yeah, and he's ended up not playing for Chelsea and not like the two teams I support. And he's ended up not playing for Chelsea and not playing for England. Incredible, honestly, incredible. Look, he's been doing so well, so we wish him good luck. Um, until, think, until until the until, final, until we, we wish him really bad luck. I think Nico Williams for yeah. Spain has been. I wouldn't say a revelation because those that follow Spanish football would have known about him if, if you if you know your stuff. But I think it's been fantastic. You know what it is? You know when we look at our wingers mm. who cut in and cut in and it's all slow and it's just this. He just attacks you. Yeah, it's the opposite. He just goes straight at you like, okay, let's let's do this. A bit like... It's Doku before Doku was pet. Mate, you just read my mind. It's Doku before it, Doku it was pet. It is that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it yeah, yeah. is that, isn't it? Yeah, I, li- I like him. I think he's. I think he's been brilliant. I think there's a huge transfer. Uh, he's got a huge release clause, hasn't he? Like mm. huge. But I think somebody will pay it. I think he's demonstrating all of the attributes that you need in order to make it at the very top. Yeah. So I think I think he is shone. But again, I would say that we can talk about Nico Williams being very good, no doubt. You could talk about Ardagula being very good, again, no doubt. But the best player in the tournament has been Jamal Musiala, and everybody else is a runner up. No, you, you know. Okay, I'll give you that one. Um, game of the tournament so far is an interesting one. There's been one. a few. There's been a few. I, I was watching, I don't know what other game was on TV, but I was watching the Netherlands versus Austria. Which yeah, just seemed to go back and forth yeah. in terms of goals. And I, I thought Austria-Turkey, actually, now you said the Austria. Yeah. Austria-Turkey Austria, was a great game. Austria unlucky not to still be in this tournament. I don't know, it was the most no, no, Ralph no. Rangnick performance I think I've ever seen. Yeah, well, you, having watched Gareth Southgate, I'd I, I, I one-up you there. Southgate's in the tournament. Yeah, no. This is the point. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, now yeah, we're going back to my theory, yeah. it doesn't matter how you're playing. It doesn't matter if you're playing well. You don't have to play well. Mm. All you have to do is find a way. In a seven-game tournament, form doesn't matter. In fact, how many times have we seen teams play well and actually win the tournament. You know what game... Very true. You know what game I thought was really good? And this is... You're going to laugh when I say it, but hear me out. Germany versus Scotland. And the reason I say that is because I always feel like you need a home nation to start a tournament with yeah. a bang. Yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of talk about Germany maybe not being the Germany of old and they're going into this tournament. Obviously, look, they didn't have to qualify as the host. And where are Germany? What's going mm. on? The management situation. Germany looked good and they, they started bang. And I was like, yes. The tournament needed yeah. that. No, it's it's that's lighting the touch paper, isn't it? I do yeah. think I do think you're onto something there as well, and you can kind of take this beyond just Germany. A tournament, a good tournament, will often be good because the host nation does well. Yeah. So, for example, people look back on the Russia World Cup really fondly. It was a great World Cup. The summer of 2018 is one that we fondly remember. Russia did really well. Really well, surprised really well. Yeah. And I think that that had an impact on the overall thought around the tournament. So, yeah, Germany doing well. Germany 
lighting the tournament on fire in that first game against uh, Scotland. Mm. I think you're I think you're right to flag yeah, that. The Scots game. won't thank me for it, but yeah, I think Germany really good. Uh, best moment. Uh, look, we are going obviously Jude Bedenham loving here, but that is the best moment. And who better to ask than the man that was in the stadium? Best moment is Jude by a billion miles. Addy, that moment in the stadium, honestly, when I think about like the best things that have ever happened to me in my life. Oh, calm down. No, genuinely. I'm not I'm not I'm got not joking. married, had a kid, I, Chelsea I, win in Bayern Munich, and all of a sudden you're telling me Jude's I, overhead kick. I, honestly, it was up there. It's up there with it's up there with what Frank Lampard did in the Reebok in 2005. It's up there with what Frank Lampard managed to do and Didier Drogba managed to do in Munich against Bayern Munich in 2012. It's up there with getting married on April Fool's Day <laughs> yeah. and Lord's Cricket Ground. It's up there with my daughter being born in 2019. Jude Bellingham managed to do something yeah. that is comparable to the very best days of my life. Nothing in a football stadium has affected me like that. As we discussed earlier, I took my top off. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. It was just this crescendo of brilliance, this cacophony, this noise, this power. And it was all thanks to Jude Bellingham. And look, I was, I've was i been very scathing about Gareth Southgate over the, over the years. I've been very worried about England in this tournament. I felt like it was so flat. That performance against Iceland on the build-up to the tournament affected me. But everything is going to be all right. Do you know why? Mm. Because Jude Bellingham is in this team mm. and Mark Gahey, when he's not suspended, is in the squad. Yeah. Like, we're not going to lose a game of football. Do you know why? Because Mark Gahey will not allow it. That's what's going to happen. I truly he's believe been good, now. He? He's been good. Gahey. He's been really good. Been, I'm going to sing again in a minute. Don't, I'm going to be doing. No, no, I'm going to be no, no, doing no, my no, rendition no, of the no, song no, for Mark no, Gahey. No. But look, I do. I do think that that moment is is Jude Bellingham because if England are going to have, I think even neutrals. I think neutrals would say that as well. By of the course, way. it's the yeah. goal of the tournament. It's the goal, yeah. Like even if even if you're not English and biased, it's the goal of the tournament. The, the other thing that I think we just have to have to acknowledge here is often with a tournament. You need that catalyst. You need that moment. You need that player to spark you into life. This could be it. Off the back of what happened in Gelsenkirchen, England's tournament could effectively start. So when we come out against the Swiss, look, you know, after the Swiss, if we haven't won that game convincingly, played really well, been dynamic, maybe you're onto something and maybe it is flat and maybe I'm wrong. But I honestly do believe that Jude Bellingham scoring a bicycle kick with 30 seconds left of a knockout tie for England in Germany... That is going to inspire and invigorate us onto winning this tournament. Pre-tournament, I think if we were to ask you who's England's most important player, I think you could have maybe made a case for three or four. Stones, because he yeah. he is now the leader at that back, right? Uh, Kane, Rice, Jude. Is Jude now England's most important player? Is it just him above the rest? No, it isn't. Who's, who's, and look, it, it who, is. who's the most important player? The, the, reason, the reason why it's not Jude Bellingham is because there are other players that can do mercurial no, things. Just, Maybe that, not just as well. that one. No, just the, that best, one. The, the most important player in the tournament are the two centre-halves. That, that's who the most important is because with Gahey out, we have to totally change our shape. If Stones was out, we have to totally change mm. our shape. Basically, if either Gahey or Stones are out, it puts Gareth Southgate in a very difficult position because he has to play five at the back. Yeah. And I don't mind this five at the back. I think it's quite a good system for us to play. But you don't want Gareth Southgate to be hamstrung. You want him to have options. So I think the two centre-halves are actually the irreplaceable players for England. All right, there's all your positive. Let's do one last negative. Biggest disappointment of the Euros so far. Biggest disappointment. I mean, should we say Scotland here? Is that, is no, that... I, didn't, I, I had no expectations for Scotland. I mean, Hungary, Athlete. Switzerland and Germany. Well, Hungary, Switzerland and Germany, it was always going to be tough. Mm. I didn't think they were going to get through that. Um, if I'm being really cynical here, if I'm going to be really harsh, Go on. you know how much I love Harry Kane. Ooh, you know how highly I rate here Harry Kane. Go. I think Harry Kane is a, arguably the best footballer in the world. I think that Harry Kane almost cumulatively deserves a Ballon d'Or. He scored 50 goals in Germany. I think he's an amazing footballer. And I love, I love how I know he always two goals. This. Rory always has a tendency to do this, by the way. Every time he's going to kick someone, he'll give all the plaudits and love to that person first, just no, so the kick's soft. But I'm trying, just I'm, kick him. No, it's because, I, it. it's because I think the context is really important with regard to Kane, because he hasn't been that bad. He scored two goals. He scored a winner for England, you know? It's not a bad campaign. It's just, in my opinion, he's one of the best footballers in the world at the moment. In my opinion, he's the best footballer in this England team. So it's what I expect from him which is why I feel slightly let down from him but what about you if you were to if you were to have to say somebody here Phil who's Foden. let you down Phil Foden's been disappointing he's been very and he's almost got away with it because I feel like the conversations if England went out obviously it would have been all about Gareth but I think Phil Foden's name would have been mentioned a lot as well now mm. I think he's been so disappointing especially you're talking PFA player of the year writers you know writers player of the year I don't think Foden's Premier been that League bad. player of the year I what? really don't I don't think he's been that bad Foden 
I don't. Mean? My expectation for him before the yeah, tournament. Yeah, no, the expectation was wise. The expect, ex- expectation the wise. Not delivered fine. in any way, shape, or form. Fine. He needs to deliver. He needs to deliver. He'll have a big game. And have you're a big saying game he's going to play in his best position on Saturday. Let's hope so and let's see what he can do. It's does. Talk sport.